Sports Line, brought to you by Ace Hardware, AKLC Studios, Arnold Furniture, Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, Maceo's Italian Deli, Island Tire, Matteo's Pizza, Myrtle's Brewery Outlet, the Resevich Family of Funeral Homes, 380 Discount Warehouse, Tower Auto Sales, and Westmoreland Insurance Services. And of course, the show you see live Monday night on streaming, video tapes for the replay on Comcast Cable. So it's been uh, Bob Tavin here, Mike Tavin, James Malloy, and the other end. And it was a week ago uh, Saturday. Well, it will be a week. It, it can't be used as a time period. We're going to be talking about that, uh, a lot about it in the second half hour that we have uh, to our disposal. But anybody else that was called in in the meantime, and I'm going to limit you to not talking about it. What a great career and a great guy. Stan Weasley. Was, was there another more perfect gentleman in the game? I don't think so. I think he's also probably the best harmonica player in the Hall of Fame, too. He, he, yeah. And yeah. That, 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 it, it, compare him to Linz, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> <laughs> he's still Linz. We got a winner yeah. there, huh? Anyway, when you think of all the jerks that have played Major League Baseball, and I don't know that I would call them complete jerks. People who have acted like jerks, mm -hmm. Reggie Jackson. Would you agree? Some, or, some people okay. that I've heard of, Johnny Bench, I've experienced that one. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. First hand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, some other folks that in, uh, down the line that um, just treated people like dirt, Barry Bonds, maybe the biggest. Maybe. Ma maybe. Is, but Barry was very schizophrenic, though. I, from, from the people that I heard that covered him, you never knew from one day to the next what you were going to get there. Mm -hmm. Some days he could be perfectly nice, and then other days he was just, you just didn't know, yeah. is it good Barry or bad Barry today? And then yeah. you, you'd almost root for consistency there. If somebody was just going to, not like Belichick, you know, you pretty much know what you're going to get with him, and you get the same thing every day. You've learned to deal with it. It doesn't bother you probably yeah. after, even though he got lit up pretty good by Shannon Sharp yesterday, but, and yeah. deservedly so. So, you know, th yeah. that, that can be, but. Stan Musial was a great guy and, um, and a local, a Denora, a Denora product, and, uh, and uh, 92 years old, a great long life. And the stories that I've heard the last couple of days, it was my dad's favorite player, so that's why I always had an mm -hmm. interest in him. So. What, what, the one interesting t statistic that um, um, our, our former broadcast partner, Joe Falsetti, had mentioned, 3,630 hits, 1815 at home, 1815 on the road, Right down the middle. He that, didn't play favorites. That is unbelievable. <laughs> and if you look and you think about it, that he hit 475 home runs, which is a lot of home runs. Right. Um, but the most times he ever struck out in one season was 46. And that's when he was 42 wow. years old. So he, yeah. never, he didn't strike out. And, then, and we'll talk about this when we get into it later. I'm going to tell you about his 1948 season. We will. We'll which may be that. the greatest season by a hitter of all time. And you can't crit criticize the fact that they had questionable pitching because of the war. The war was, was over, over, and this and was who was coming back? Was this was back. baseball in its boom in 1948. You got it. It's you got so. it. Okay. We're going to take uh, a moment here to give you the rules and the regulations for winning a prize on the program. If you won last week, you're not eligible this week. So every other week, you may win on this program. And... Um, the Grand Salami and the Mystery Profile can be won once a month, one or the other, but not both. And you can try the Mystery Profile once a month. The Grand Salami, you can try every week. As long as you keep missing it, we don't care because we got some great questions. Multiple choice, 15 seconds. The Grand Salamo, 15, uh, 20 seconds. And the Mystery Profile, clue by clue. Okay, first time callers. If you haven't called at least in a year, we consider you a first time caller and you will win an extra prize. Also, you can get answers to the trivia question simply by going on my website, doubledribblebob.com. 
and log on to, and not really log on, but link up to where it says Daily Sports Trivia. Right there. I've got a radio show. Gosh, we're in our four and a half years now. Whoa. Saturday mornings, 10 o'clock, WAVL, and they are on the AM dial. I am surprised at how many people say, are they between uh, the fan and uh, three WS? I said, no, 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 no. The AM dial. You can, go, you can go to KDKA and then slip down from 1020 down to 910, and that's where they are. Uh, exactly. AM is uh, not exactly, uh, yeah. That, okay. that's, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's funny. Very much. Okay. It's used to be the deal. I know. It used to and be. And FM was such a little baby. It was. Didn't know how to it control. needed to be nurtured. Yes, yes, indeed. All right, break time. Let's do that. When we come back, our leadoff hitter will be aboard. Stay tuned. The show continues in a moment. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Accidents happen. Are you prepared? You can be with a wide range of homeowners insurance options from Westmoreland Insurance Services. Putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. My first book on sports is available not only through the internet, but at various local businesses in the AK Valley. It's Bob Tattern's Sports Minutes. Short sports stories, odd and unusual, fascinating and funny, only take about a minute to read. Go online to doubletriplebob.com where links are provided for Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Word Association to get book information. Get your copy locally at Costello Printing in Tarentum, Blackburn's in Tarentum, Myrna's Brewery Outlet in New Kensington, or the Hot Dog Guys Lower Borough. And if you're shopping for a pre-owned vehicle, make sure that you consider Tower Auto Sales with over 30 years of experience at the same location. Check in with Tower Auto Sales and let them help you in the selection of your next pre-owned vehicle. Tower Auto Sales, just buy it. Call Mike Fanto at 412-828-6202. And we welcome you back to the show. Uh, let's jump on the line right now. I believe uh, our leadoff hitter, Tony, is at bat. Good evening. Hi, Tony. Hey, what did you ever hear of a leadoff batter having 24 grand slams? That's hey. right. And by the way, congratulations. You've, uh, I, I you've gone ahead of Lou I've Gehrig. heard you broke the record. I, I'm disappointed I wasn't here to see it. But, well, um, and, and maybe that's the reason I broke it. You might be the jinx. That might be true. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I checked, Tony? You have not won. Since May, and I'm not sure if it was May 26th or somewhere. No, July. It was July, the last time I won. It was right before we moved. Yeah, that's what I said. Hmm. That's amazing. Yep, that was July because oh. I marked it down. I thought I had checked uh, the date on that. but. Uh, yeah, you better okay. recheck again, just like <laughs> today when I was asked what trivia I was going for. You wanted to know. Oh, you're right. Yeah, before you went on the air, I, I asked the girl, ask him if he's going to go yeah. salami or whatever. And she's, I just won. Okay, you caught me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're going to be watching the ball bowl, huh? You know what? That's uh, how, how have we ever seen two brothers coaching in a championship game at any level? Never have. College happened. in a bowl game? Super Unless it was a high here. school basketball or something. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Or two more obnoxious brothers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You couldn't get any more. I, I, I will, I'm going to do, because uh, I told Bob earlier today, I'm going to do a news blackout on the Super Bowl leading up to it. And the only time I'm going to listen to anything about it is when I'm sitting here this one hour this week and next. Because <laughs> there's, no, there's no, I can't, I won't be able to stand it between that and Ray Ray acting like a complete moron. Oh, my God. Um. By the way, he's, 
It, it's amazing. You know, I, I want to, what can we do to get God to talk to us when we want to talk to him like he does? I'm trying to figure out how uh, he ranks up so high on the list that, you know. Oh, Ray, he'll get you. He's he'll right. get you Maybe, caught. Yeah. Has, it seems like he has a direct line. But by the way, they played very well, and they deserved to win. Oh, they did. They, and, you know and, why? I, and I have because, no problem uh, with it. I have no I problem with it at all. Their, their offense is, uh, you know, is starting to uh, dominate games. They're playing good football, and I'll tell you what, so is Joe Flacco. And I've been the biggest critic, and, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll eat my crow. I'll, you can serve it up here if they win. But um, he's playing good football, too. Their defense has come around. And the thing is, you know, here's what's funny. It's, injuries are such a factor when it comes to these things. And oh, yeah. it, it isn't necessarily how many guys you get hurt, but it's when you get them hurt and when you get them back. They got healthy at the right time. They lost four of their last five regular right. season games. And right. Nobody would have given them a plug nickels chance of making it to the Super Bowl. But what happened while that was happening was they fired their moronic offensive coordinator, Cam Cameron, who was terrible, and Jim Caldwell, who was the old coach of the Colts, Right. Um, the last time they went to the Super Bowl, took over calling the plays, something he's never done before, by the way, which is amazing. And he was a head coach at Wake Forest. He was head coach with the Colts and an assistant for many years in the NFL. And everything just seemed to fall in place at the right time for them. And I said, I tip my cap to them. They've done a great oh, yeah. job. You know, I you know, totally agree. But uh, I think Flacco's finally maybe reached where, you know, uh, he finally reached uh, his point, you know, where he yeah. wanted to be the whole time. And uh, so. It, some people develop at different rates than others. And yeah, when he, when he was at Pitt, he didn't deserve to play over Tyler Powell. Well, hey, look, look 15 years ago in that uh, you, you drafted a quarterback. He sat on the bench three to five years. Right. Well, he, he didn't start right away. No. It's, it's a different breed. It's a different way. Well, and it's a, I think, and I don't know what you guys think about this, that they have done gone to so many lengths to promote <laughs> offense and make it so hard to play defense. But now quarterbacks walk right out of college in their stars. Colin I, Kaepernick started nine games in the National Football League. Yeah. Russell Wilson his first year. Robert Griffin his first year. Andrew Luck his first year. These guys walk in, and they're not only, not only you know, it used to be, well, we're, they need to sit for two or three years. and see, Now they throw them right in out of the first game. Mm -hmm. And they're dominating. And they dominate the league because I, yeah. I really think that they have legislated defense out. And, and, but, and the thing is, when you can play good defense, as the Ravens have done here the last month, you see what that does for you. It puts you at a great advantage. Right. And uh, I know I've said this on the show a million times and told other people. <clears throat> when Bolden was a uh, free agent, I wanted to grab him so bad. I you know, said, so, well, what do you want him for? He's not. I said, the guy gets open and he has great heads. He's and, a, he, and he always killed the Steelers. He's a tight, he's a tight end playing wide receiver. He's a right. big guy right. and he is strong. He is. And, uh, I, you know, and, the, and, the, and the Ravens were wise and they, and they got him. And uh, he's really come through for them. And yes, and I said, they deserve to win. And uh, 49ers did too, even when it was 17 nothing. You just had that feeling. The Falcons wanted to choke so bad. Yeah, and I felt bad for Matt Ryan because I really like Matt Ryan. I think he's a really good coach. Oh, uh, you know what? But he coach, choked that snap. There's That's... something wrong with that coaching staff down there because, uh, you know, I they you know, they should have lost to Seattle. Well, they, they should have lost. lost. They didn't deserve to win that game. No, they didn't. Not after they blew it and Ryan, I mean, if it wasn't for Ryan bringing them back in the last 30 seconds, it would have yeah. never. You know, they, they jumped never... up, you know, they jumped up, you know, yes, 17 nothing. I said, "Uh, oh, don't tell me another one of these." And boy, no sooner I said that. Yeah, because I wasn't rooting for anybody. Really, I just wanted good games as well. I was yeah. looking for yesterday. Yeah. Well, you know what? I wanted to see two different teams. You know, I wanted to see the Ravens in. I mean, don't get me wrong, because I hate New England, but I hate both, but I hate New me England too. before. And I wanted to see Atlanta in, not, 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 not Frisco. Somebody different. Yeah. yeah now, if not Frisco, if they win, they could tie us. Yeah, that's not going to bother me that much, because I'm not going to be able to root for Baltimore. I, I'll, I will give Baltimore all the credit in the world if they win because they'll deserve it. I can't root for Baltimore. If, if, if they win, I can't root for a hard ball. I can't. Oh, it's a this is <laughs> well, I'm going to root for the referees. <laughs> That's what, I, I see, well, what we used to say, and you'll forgive me for this, Notre Dame against Penn State, who do you root for? I said injuries. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that, that's the way it was back in those days when they all played each other. But <laughs> yeah, I understand. I, uh, you know, or West, you know, West Virginia and Penn State, that, you know, that was another injury game. Yeah, but, know. you know, you just you, you basically, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And uh, I just hope it's a good game. The line's interesting, Tony. I, yeah, I checked four and it right, a half. I checked it right away, and San Francisco was four and a half. Right. It's already down to three and a half. Uh, that, that's a whole point in a day. And usually. Somebody it, must like a hardball as coach. Oh, huh? usually the line fluctuates on this usually most in the first 24 hours, and then it usually finds its level and it stays there. Yeah. Here's the other one. I thought under right away, and I'll tell you why. The number was 50. I thought under because you have two first-time teams. 
And usually nerves are going to take over in that first quarter. I mean, the first quarter, it's like the, the football championship game is usually like that when Alabama doesn't go all the time. Now, I don't know how many each team has, if any. Well, yeah, the Ravens have, uh, uh, <clears throat> have uh, you know, guys been in the Super Bowl. Okay? Well, Ray, Ray, Lewis, is Ray, the, Ray Lewis is the only one. From their right? team, and, Bolden, and Bolden's been there, but it, it's a handful. Yeah, both sides. I mean, you're probably talking to less than half a dozen but, each way. But neither coaches have have been there. No, I don't think so. This is this is. I know it's Jim Harbaugh's first trip there. I don't unless, know if John Harbaugh. Unless they were assistant on something. Yeah, maybe something. an assistant somewhere. That, well, yeah. well, here's one you know. But the Ravens. Jim Caldwell was just there three, four years ago with the Colts when they when right, they lost right. to the Saints. Yeah, so he was. I mean, he's been there recently, and that's going to be invaluable. You need people, and frankly, Ray Lewis is going to be invaluable no matter what we think about him. Oh, yeah. He's at least been oh, there yeah. and done that, and he he knows what to expect. Oh, most definitely. But the, the yeah. it's it's such a different level. They these guys don't know till they get there. Yeah. And, and, you know, you think you can prepare for it. You can say you've been in playoff games. But until you actually show up there, and this one's going to be in New Orleans, which is going to be the craziest place to have it. Well, you know, the way I look at it is, you know, Ray, Ray Lewis is dangerous on the field, but he's more dangerous after the game. And it's true, especially after Super Bowls. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, now you talked about Stan Musial, great man, you know, the old bit, uh, Pennsylvania boy. Uh, but uh, Weaver died, too. Earl Weaver, Earl Weaver right? another just a great man. Now I think he patented uh, the hat being turned around. I love that. You know when he used to argue with the umpires, he'd turn his hat around so so the brim wouldn't hit the umpire. Exactly. <laughs> and I think he patented that. I think that, you know that's when it first started. You know like you know you know like the rally caps when he turned them around. I've seen Luke Pinella do it um, since, but I think he was probably the first. He he was the first manager to get thrown out of a World Series game. Yeah. He he was the first. He was the. He, led the, he, he had the record for ejections until Bobby Cox just broke it here within the last couple of years. But um, he, was, he was the greatest. The only thing he couldn't do was beat the Pirates in the World Series. That was his Achilles heel. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh, well, Billy Martin had a few games. He got ejected quite a few I times. love Billy Martin. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I, I love managers Martin. like that. You don't have any, there, there aren't any personalities in managers anymore. You know, it, and you know the best part that Martin played. He was a ball player. He was a good ball player. Good ball player. You know, and, and, you know, and then when he went out there, you know, and they knew – that he, you know, that he knew what he was talking about. Sure. <laughs> but, well, Weaver, uh, yeah, he used to be a hoot to watch him go. The funny thing about and, Weaver, the funny thing about Weaver. Especially the dugout with Reggie Jackson, him, them two good. Oh, yeah, and Yogi had to break him up. funny thing about Earl Weaver was, he said he spent 10 years in the minor leagues as a player. And uh -huh. they asked him, how did you know it was time to get out? I mean, you waited that long. How did you know? He goes, well, he goes, I spent the first four years going up and then the last six years going down. He goes, when, when I ended up back in A-ball, I knew it was time to get out. Yep, that's for sure. That's for sure, guys. Tony Good to Well, all right, guys. I'll, I'll let you go. And I, and I left, I, and I didn't mention Manti Teo once. Oh, that's all right. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what's going on. It, it's a weird. Uh, yeah, it was. But yeah, so, I don't know. We'll see in your interview. I was just reading the paper now that nobody asked him to take a lie detector test. Well, I, I wouldn't even, you know, what, whatever the case is, it is. Yeah. All, all I yeah. know is it's, You know, whatever it is, he still lost his grandmother. So, yeah, that's what I said. It's like, yeah. you know what, his grandmother did die, and I felt bad about that. So, yeah. you know, whatever the case may be. And, and I think, you know, we should all be happy because a young girl's not dead. So, yeah, true. I think it all works out. But, but she should be in jail if she's part of it. Whoever is. There's got yeah, to sure. be something, exactly. And I, and, I, and I also don't believe that he, that he didn't, uh, he wasn't in on it at some point. I don't think it started that way. I don't know. I, I couldn't tell I'm you. I'm not into catfishing. I, I don't know why. Uh, somebody told me that, that uh, somebody told him the only way you're going to win the Heisman Trophy if you have something uh, have a tragic story. happen. He needed tragic a story. Happen. That's, yeah. that's one story I heard, you know. Well, here's, here's all I know. He's still going to get drafted, and he's still oh, yeah. probably yeah. going to have a good career in the NFL because you look at some of the characters that get drafted. This, this is kind of low on the totem pole on those things that happen to people. Oh, my God, yes. You know. Hey, look, uh, another Cincinnati bingo uh, got arrested. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> Gee whiz, That's 30 alert the media. In 10 years. You know, <laughs> alert the media. Five, five, Cincinnati Bengal, five, uh, five Cincinnati Bengals in the car. Who's driving? A policeman. Okay. <laughs> I, I, you know, I would say next year they play 16 games. They'll probably go 12 and four, 12 arrests, four convictions. Well, that's why they put that's why they put the stripes on the helmet, Tony. That way they know, they would be in their natural habitat. I would think. So. Oh gosh. All right, gentlemen. Cincinnati have a good day. jokes keep on coming. Of course, as Steeler fans, we have no room to talk right now because we, we're uh, oh we're, no, please we're don't about even mention them. Yeah, uh, I, I want the them out of my oh Penguins. Exactly. Two and zero. Right. Oh, Two and zero. Oh, I've seen this circus before. I just hope that uh, you know that they can finish. 
That's, you know, they're only playing 48 now. But that's right. That's all right. I, but, but I hope they can, you know, finish strong and uh, the coaching staff wakes up. And I like I like having two really good goalies that you could go to either one. Uh, yeah, but don't forget now, guys. We again, and the, you feel the Penguins end up with two superstars. We had Lemieux and uh, Yager. Uh, huh? Yager. Yeah, Yager. Now, now, now we got two more. All right, and you got to win when you have people you like sure that. Sure. You, <laughs> you have to win. Tony, thanks, thanks for the call. Tony. You know, you have to get, uh, uh, you know, the characters uh, around them that, uh, you know, they can help them win. It's all like a puzzle. Yep. Okay, yep. Tony. Bye-bye, guys. Stay warm. Oh, right. up to, uh, hey, uh, uh, hot dog guys. Go out, get a hot dog. Yes. Try my Terminator. Great people out there. You don't only get a good hot dog, but you get a good conversation. They're two, they're two nice guys. They are good guys. There's no all right, guys. That. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tom. Break time. We're going to do that. Come back. And I think the limo man is on the phone the holding. Fan. The fan. <laughs> so let's take the break and we will return. Three eighty auction and discount warehouse, Route three eighty, Murraysville. See us first for holiday decorations and supplies. Our entire inventory is on sale at discount prices. Don't wait. Supplies are limited. Since you'll spend less than you thought on decorations, see us for gifts. Our inventory of new name brand furniture, tools, housewares, pet supplies, automotive supplies, and toys are also on sale at discount prices. Get to 380 Auction and Discount Warehouse today. Route 380 Murraysville. Why do Arnold Furniture's customers continue to come back year after year? Maybe it's the personal touch that the Miller family has provided since 1975. Maybe it's the prices that are consistently lower than the competition. Or how about the selection? Four floors of living room, dining room, recliners, bedding, accessories, and so much more. Plus free local delivery, free setup, and free removal of your old furniture guaranteed. The choice is obvious. Visit Arnold Furniture online at arnoldfurnitureinc.com or stop in and see us today. Max and his son made their way homeward bound when mischievous rain dropped down, down, down. Safety was threatened by every roguish drip. They slipped and slid. They couldn't get a grip. Then along came the Michelin Man, reminding them the right tire changes everything. Stop up to 31 feet shorter than a leading competitor with the new Michelin Defender tire, backed by a 90,000-mile warranty. Michelin, a better way forward. Available at Highland Tire under the bridge in Terenum and Freeport Road in Trona Heights. Well, as we mentioned at the outset of the program, good to have you with us tonight for Sportsline Trivia. Bob Tattern here. Mike Pavlin joins me on the program tonight as co-host. And uh, we've been chatting a little bit about the Steelers, uh, the Penguins, who are off to a great start. And uh, Stan Musial's passing this uh, past Saturday also uh, made an impact on a lot of folks who followed uh, professional ba Major League Baseball, if you will. Back in his day, starting in the 40s and uh, retired, I believe, in 1963. 50 years ago. Can you imagine that? He retired, he retired 50 years ago. And lived to 92. So anyway, let's go to uh, the limo man on the phone next. Bruce, how you doing? Okay. Milo? Hey, Bruce. It's good how to are you, you, Milo? I'm doing great. How are you? You know, Stan Musial's real name was Stanislaus. Franzek. That's correct. He was very Polish. And, yes. And proud of it. Oh, yeah. I, I had dinner with him at his restaurant in St. Louis called Biggie's. They, I, I, they were talking about this today, Limo, on the radio. Bob Ryan from Boston Globe was talking about it. And he said that he, would, he didn't really have much to do with running it. He had his name on it and had the steak and had yeah. a steak in it. But he would go there and eat all the and <laughs> have a steak there too. He would go there and eat all the time, and then he would do, he would just to re, with regular people. He would eat with them, sign autographs. They said that Stan Musial's autograph is probably not worth anything because there were probably a million of them out there because he signed yeah. for everyone. He had the best ribs I ever ate. Really? Yeah. I'm a big ribs guy. I love ribs too. Mm. But um, yeah, it's, but he, he was supposedly super personable. He would pull out a lawn chair at his grandkids' games, a soccer game, a baseball yeah. game, a softball, whatever, and him and his wife would just pull out a lawn chair, unfold them, sit down, and then people would like anybody come, else. And it would be like you were waiting online to see the Pope, and people would. And come I got a statue of him in Denora. 
Yeah, they do. They have a statue. Well, the Denora. one they have of, uh, well, it's not in Denora, but the one they have of Perry Como. At Cannonsburg. It does. Plays music. I got, in tru I got in trouble over that statue in Cannonsburg. Oh, really? I donated oh, money for that. When you go to Cannonsburg, a block from Sarah's Candy, That's right. you'll hear Perry all day and all night. I'll well, when we have time, I'll tell that later. <laughs> we'll, we'll call all that right. a tease. I'll tell that. I was doing a game for you, too, by the way. And I, oh. ended, up, I ended up with foot and mouth disease in the press box that night. I'll, we'll, we'll, yeah. No. I did. It was it was good, but uh, yeah, they. Um, you, you realize Stan Musial had three thousand twenty six games, tied for six of all time, and sixth in runs batted in. Still yes. to this day, he retired fifty years ago, and he's still fifth in RBIs. And, uh, 3, and also understand six hundred thirty career hits, and, and he hit three thirty one. With 475 home runs and 1,951 RBIs. He is the all time career leader in home runs that never had a, a year in, in which he led his league. He came very close in 1948. He would have shared it. Was that the year, Mike? 1948. 1948. He nearly won the triple crown. Later on, I'll tell well, you yeah, everything we're going to get into that. that. It's yeah. unbelievable that, that when he led the league in that year. It may most, be one of the greatest years of all time. The most odd statistic. I mean, he won the Medal of Freedom in 2011 right, from the, the last, president. As the last time I saw him, um, uh, he was at the White House, and President Obama gave him the Medal of Freedom, and he wasn't able to stand up. Oh, really? Uh, no, he was still in his chair, and uh, and the, the president was really slick about it. And he's talking about it while he did it, put the medal around him, and kept talking. So as you never saw that as everyone else stand, stood yeah. up, and then he whispered something into his ear, and Stan kind of laughed. And I, th I, thought that was a, I thought it was really classy the way he pulled that off. That was Harry Callis' favorite restaurant. Oh, was it really? Boy, those guys that traveled must know everyone. You know what, Mike Shannon? And Shan in Brooklyn, Frank Sinatra's famous restaurant, Patsy Grimaldi. Patsy Grimaldi's. I know mm. Jilly's was big, too. You know, yeah, he went a, there. He went to Jilly's. There was a, and there's uh, a new book out, Bob Francona, The Red Sox Years, available now. I heard about I think that. Dan, he wrote I that did. with Dan Shaughnessy, I believe. Uh, yeah. And Pete Elliott died. Did I, you remember him? I don't. Third baseman? Football All-American and oh. coach of Michigan. Okay. Oh, oh that, okay. I'm, you know who I'm thinking about is You're Bob Elliott. You're thinking of Bob Elliott. Yeah. Pete Brady. Elliott. By the way, born in 1926 and died 2013. Okay. All right, we're going to have to move this along here. We yeah. have another. All right, and I'm ready for multiple choice. No, 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 I am no, no, eligible. No, I, thought, I thought you just won. Or was that two weeks ago? I won something that's worthless. All right, let, all right little man, here, let's go. Let's have all right. Number one, we'll start at the top. What team with only 47 offensive yards? beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2002. Oh, I remember this. The Miami Dolphins, the Houston Texans, the Cleveland Browns, or the Cincinnati Bengals beat the Steelers in 2002 with only 47 yards of total offense. I'll give them to you again, Limo. Dolphins, Texans, Browns, Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals. That is not correct. The answer is the Houston Texans and that was a game that Tommy Maddox basically threw away by th consistently throwing interceptions to the Houston Texans and the Steelers. The Texans were an expansion team that year, and the Steelers blew that game at home, too, by the way. Hey, we got to jump over to Mark, who's waiting. He's got to get back. It's a long drive in two plates, center field, and this one is for Sue and Randy, new listeners at the Magnolia Room. There you go. All right. Thanks, Lemo. Mark, welcome to the program. Sorry you were on hold for so long. How are you doing? Oh, good evening, fellas. No, it's only been a couple minutes. That's I good. like listening to the limo, man. Everybody does. He's oh. very entertaining. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> did anybody mention that Musial only struck out 50 times a year at the most? We were talking about 40? that okay. earlier. I, I have okay. the numbers in front of me, and I checked it out. Um, only three times did he strike out more than 40 times, and the most was 46 at age 41. And that's with 475 home runs. It's unbelievable. I mean, that the, the, the low that the low amount of strikeouts now, 46 is a month for some of these yeah. guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, growing up, I remember just seeing him near the end, like you know, 62 and three is playing days. <laughs> um, J 
changing the subject. Did anybody, I mean, being at work and not knowing what's going on in the world, did they mention who's any of the finalists yet for the um, Hall of Fame or nominees? Well, the nominees are out. Jerome Bettis is on the list. They will do it um, the Saturday before the Super Bowl, which will be two in two weeks, mm -hmm. approximately. You mean... You mean uh, the Pro Bowl, the Saturday before, next, next Saturday then? No, no, it's, it's the, before the Super Bowl, the day before. Oh, I'm sorry. So it'll okay. be in two weeks. No, they won't do it. The Pro, the Pro Bowl's back in Hawaii, so they're not even on site anymore. The, you know, they've gone back to Hawaii, but they are going to have the Pro Bowl the week ahead. It's going to be this coming week. Yeah, okay. I, I, like okay. That better. I was thinking it was. A... I like that better. But So that'll be, which, what will it be, the February 2nd? Yeah, hopefully, this coming Saturday, or the next Saturday. Weeks, right. Hopefully it won't be Groundhog yeah. Day for the bus. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, they'll, uh, <laughs> hopefully they'll actually let them in this time. Any sport where you're sixth leading rusher of all time, you're sixth in any major category, can't get into the Hall of Fame, there's something wrong with the system. He, this, guy, this guy needs to be put in the Hall of Fame. Is it, it, is he, it the coin toss? I believe they're, they're <laughs> down to 50. Yeah, they're down to the 15 finalists, and he is one of them. Now, there's okay. also two seniors. Those usually are just by acclamation. They go through. Yeah. So that means five other guys, as many as five other guys. He's the only running back in the last 15. Okay, and did it ever happen before when the uh, home team for the last, like the playoffs, like yesterday, both home teams lost? They said the last time that happened was 1997. I know okay. who one of them was. Yeah. Denver, beat the, <laughs> yeah. Denver beat the Steelers. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming then that it had to be um, Green Bay, and I never looked it up. It had to be Green Bay, but I'm not sure they would have beaten. I would guess it would either have been Dallas or San Francisco because Green Bay would have won on the road then because Green Bay is who the Broncos beat their first one. Green Bay had won the year before by beating New England, and then the next year they went back and they lost to, uh, and they lost mm -hmm. to the Broncos. So I'm going to say they probably beat either um, – Either the Cowboys or the 49ers would have been it in 97. Well, okay, I guess I better go for multiple choice. I don't want to take up too much oh. of your time now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Nobody has tried the mystery profile uh, for uh, Matios, who, by the way, opened this week up in Brackenridge Heights. They yes, finally. I, I'm going to be using that coupon this week that I right. won a month ago, yeah. All right, here we go. Number two on multiple choice, name the youngest player to see action in the NBA. Who was the youngest player to see action in the NBA? Pardon me, the NBA. Tom Gola, LeBron James, Moses Malone, Andrew Bynum. I don't know basketball too well. LeBron James? Uh, you know, that's an educated guess, but that is incorrect. At 18 years and less than a week, Andrew Bynum is the correct answer on that one, Mark. Okay, Andrew well, I'll Bynum. be eligible next time again. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you. You Thanks, fellas have Mark. a good night. All right, appreciate it. Talk a little bit here about uh, our good friends at Matteo's Pizza. Uh, they have moved from where they had been at uh, or near Drescher Stadium in Tarentum. They have now moved to... 1000 Broadview Boulevard in Brackenridge Heights. So if you're coming from Terenum up toward the Heights, as soon as you get beyond Prospect Cemetery, right around the corner, the first traffic light you get to, you would make that right hand turn and there's Matteo's right on the corner. You can't miss him. And great food, not only pizzas, but you know, all the other fast food products you'd like to you know, get your gums and teeth around. Gotcha. Good, good stuff. All right? Matteo's Pizza, you have the phone number right there, 724-904-7312. And I made a call right before airtime, and they are open. They are open. ready to go. Get all my all Highlands right. friends over there. That's perfect. Uh, <laughs> Wonderful. It's in, a, it's in a perfect location right up there on the road. By the way, I checked the 1997 NFC Championship game. Here is your final. Okay. Green Bay 23, San Francisco oh, 10. Frisco. Okay. All right. We're going to take a break here before our next call. I didn't hear that. Oh, Mr. Tampa Bay from months ago. We haven't heard for so long from Mr. Tampa Bay. He is up when we come back. Stay with us. This is where you get the absolute freshest deli meats and cheeses, Fazio's Italian Deli in Arnold. 
At Fazio's, you're getting only the best and freshest selection. Fazio's has its own bakery and offers you fresh baked bread, rolls, pastries, and more. Pick up individual salads to go, Italian sausages, hoagies, custom-made sandwiches, even party trays for your next get-together. Freshness and quality every time at Fazio's Italian Deli, Leishman and Dre in Arnold. Westmoreland Insurance Services isn't like your ordinary insurance agency. Not only can you get a variety of quotes from leading insurance companies, but you can purchase that protection through Westmoreland Insurance. Westmoreland provides a full range of coverage for all of your automobile needs. Westmoreland Insurance Services, putting your family's safety in their family's hands for almost 40 years. Give them a call, 724-337-3557. If you're shopping for a pre-owned vehicle, pre vehicle <laughs> stop in at Tower Auto Sales located on Freeport Road in Blonox, right at the traffic light. And uh, you can let their experienced sales staff help you. And I do mean experience. More than 30 years at the same location. And Mike Fanto is the guy you want to talk to to begin with. You can give them a call, 412-828-6202. And as they say at Tower Auto, just buy it. Okay, do we have, um, you know, I'm running I, I, this memory problem. Does, does that ever happen to you, Mike? Are you still too young for that? I have that. Oh, you already do? I have that, oh, yes. I, you, you, you want to know? You want, you, you want to know? No. I left <laughs> my bag at the gym Friday night. The game bag with all the equipment? All my, not the game bag, my bag with all my information in it. Oh, I've got, oh I've, I've got the equipment in the car, all right. <laughs> Luckily, there were, there were still people there when, when, I, when it dawned on me, hey, I don't have my bag. I need all that stuff. All right, Mr. Tampa Bay's on yes. the line. Mr. Tampa Bay, it is so good to hear you. How you all doing, guys? We're, we're doing, doing okay. You? Yeah, uh, before I talk about sports, that Matteo's also has a dining. You could eat in, too. Oh, it's great. It's a dining place. They have benches and tables. That's great. That's that is great. So I take it you've been there, huh? Yeah, I just ordered some food from there tonight. Well, uh, I understand they opened uh, tonight, Monday night, so. Yeah, they opened up Saturday, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it, good. Was, it was over the weekend, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm done with the Ravens this week against the Super Bowl. I think okay. they're going to beat the 49ers. Too, too much emotion, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think maybe the worst thing. The thing yeah. that happen is getting a week off. I think they need to play right away. Because yeah, that, that should be on. happening. I'm used to the Super Bowls being in January, not in February. But I, yeah, I, exactly. Heck, when the Steelers won their first one, it was like on January the 12th. So think about that. It's like a month later now. Yeah. But I think I think the Ravens' defense is, and Flacco's starting to break through. He's gonna he's gonna stop. He's gonna be in the top five quarterbacks in the before it's all over. You know, I keep seeing on television, and not that this is important as a part of the Super Bowl game, every time I turn around, I see either Peyton Manning or uh, Aaron Rodgers with Green Bay in a television oh, I'll commercial. Tell you what, that one when is school, Flacco going to get his spot? Joe Flacco is yeah. never going to get commercials. That guy, that guy has about as much personality as that stool that's holding our monitor over there. <laughs> so that, that isn't going to happen. That's well, not going to happen. Well, agencies I'll tell you what, can work around that, I Mike. guess maybe they can, but here's, Prime all, case. here's, here's <laughs> all I know. And that is that if I see Aaron Rodgers in that school with those little kids one more time, yeah. I mean, that is just, oh, for goodness sakes. It's like enough of him already. Well, you yeah. remember Terry Bradshaw's first venture into acting was when he got on with, um, oh, gosh, the guy from... Uh, Burt Reynolds? Burt Reynolds. I was going to say the guy from uh, the... I saw Burt, yes. Uh, the movies with Jackie Gleason. What was uh, that? Smokey and the Smokey Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. Smokey and the Bandit. But anyway, uh, Bradshaw uh, was teased. What show was uh, Burt Reynolds on? He, he, he did something like this. And said, Terry, that's the TV. He was making fun out of him like crazy. I, I don't know. It was no. Cannonball, I think. Cannonball Run. Cannonball Run was a great movie. Yeah. A terrible movie, but yet a great movie. I mean, that, that's... <laughs> Cannonball Run 2 was even better. I think Frank was in that. I'm in hot pursuit. I'm in hot pursuit. Smoking <laughs> <laughs> a bandit. I like yeah, that. Great stuff. But I just, well, I just want to call and tell you y'all are still alive. It's just been out of the air and been sick the last couple of months. Oh, it's good to hear you back. I've been in and, touch uh, with your brother, and he's been keeping us up to date, but uh, it's good to have you. Now, we got to give you a question. All right. 
I'll take a multiple choice. Boy, it's a shame to say. Oh, no, it is football. It is football. It is a football question, your favorite subject. Yeah. Yep. I, I think we have a shot at this one. What quarterback rushed for the most yardage in one season? What quarterback rushed for the most yards in one season? This has definitely got to be in jeopardy. Bob Greasy, Doug Flutie, Michael Vick, Bobby Douglas. Bobby Douglas. You know, he I'd have said the same thing. He, he had. I'd have said the same thing. It, it's Michael Vick. Is it really Michael yeah, Vick? Yeah, you know what? I'm telling you, that's going to have to. That, that's probably going to get. That's going to get crushed here pretty soon. Somebody's going to. Yeah, say, well, especially with the 49er quarterback. And, and, and Russell Wilson, who doesn't run so much, and Griffin, who really Griffin ran more this He'll year break than he it did next in, year. <laughs> Griffin ran more this year than he ran in college. That, that was the thing that people don't really realize. He stood back in a pocket and threw the ball around at Baylor. Um, right. But you know. It, but that, I mean, there's going to be a quarterback to get to a thousand yards here someday, and I, I, I don't know. But Kaepernick, man, he's got those strides. His legs are so skinny. I, and here's another thing: while we still have you, they, the recruiting stuff's going to be coming out here in a couple of weeks. And I saw a note about this, and it's so true. And that is, you know, you're going to hear about all these guys that are getting recruited and who had the best class and and the best teams got the 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 Super Bowl quarterbacks went to Delaware and Nevada. Hmm. Okay, they went to Delaware and Nevada. Now, Flacco made a stop at Pitt before he got to Delaware. But right. think about it. I mean, we're not talking about, I'm sure these guys weren't five-star coming out of wherever they came out of in high school. And, and now here they are both in the Super Bowl. Nevada. Yeah, I was hoping, I was hoping Seattle beat the Atlanta Falcons, but I, I just was shocked when, they, when uh, Atlanta gave up that lead and they gave up the lead again. I think that defensive coordinator for Atlanta should be you know what? It's Mike Nolan. It's the old 49ers head coach, too. And they, they, I mean, they really liked what he had done earlier in the season. But just, you know, and, and it's, not, it's not like they're a team of rookies or a team of kids. That, that's a veteran defense they put together. It's just, just not good enough. I mean, they're just, I heard today, lacking is, is what you would use to describe the Falcons. I, I felt kind of bad, too. I was rooting for uh, Matt Ryan. I wanted to see him get there. And, well, I was maybe, hoping like, for Tony Gonzalez, but, you know, it happened. Yeah, you talk about the opposite of Ray Lewis. Here's a guy, right. that, you know, here's a guy that did it all the right way, and he's probably going out now. He's, he just seems like he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's still one of the best tight ends in the game, and he's going to camp. All right. Well, hey, you guys have a good night, and I'll try again next week. You hey, got Bill, it, Tampa. I Thank appreciate you. your call. Both of us appreciate the call, and uh, we'll talk to you again next week. Absolutely. All right. Bye-bye. Right. Got some notes on Stan Musial until we get another call. Okay. We have lost. So we have some time to – Chat about a guy who spent so many years in Major League Baseball, 22 altogether, Hall of Famer. I was telling Mike, I uh, did a little research because on my radio program Saturday, I think I have about a five or six minute segment that, that deals entirely uh, with portions of Stan's career and some of the things that stand out. When he played sports at Donora High School, he played both baseball and basketball and in his senior year, and Stan was only 16 when he graduated. Well, I mean, he may have been 17 when he graduated, mm -hmm. but at age 16, his Denora High School basketball team won the championship. And the University of Pittsburgh had offered him a scholarship to attend Pitt and play the sport, which is what his dad wanted him to do. And Stan. I don't know if he was timid or not, but he said, you know, I, I would really rather play baseball. Well, his mother thought about, you know, the educational part of it, but she convinced her husband, let him make the choice. And we all know, you know, the rest, the as rest they is say, history. is history. But let's talk, Mike, about that magical year. 1948. 1948. Now listen to this. This, this is, he, he nearly won the Triple Crown. He did not win the home run title. But I think that's the only thing he didn't win. He did not win the home run title. He missed out by one. Ralph Kiner and Johnny Mize hit 40, and he hit 39. In 1948, Stan Musial led the National League in runs, hits, doubles, triples, runs batted in, batting average, on-base percentage, slugging percentage, total bases, and if you want to get into the Sabre stats, OPS and OPS+. Plus. The only thing he missed out on was home runs right. by one. And I was telling Mike I had heard the story that he had that home run. But the game didn't go the four and a half innings. And they waited for the rain to subside. It did not. 
So they had to cancel the whole thing and start from scratch. Now the National or didn't even make it up. The National League hasn't had a Triple Crown winner, I believe, since uh, Joe Medwick in 1934, uh, something Ducky like Medwick, that. Yeah. And so this would have been 1948, which would have made him the last, right. the last Triple Crown winner. But, but the, the stat that kills me is sixth all-time in RBIs, and he retired in 1963, 50 years ago. OPS is on base plus slugging. Billy Joe just asked me this. We might as well do it now. As I, I know George, when George, if George is watching now or if George watches on Thursday night, George is going to be, George just threw something at the television when I said that. And I understand that because I normally do that too, but I figured since it was on here. OPS is combination of on-base percentage plus slugging percentage. Which is walk air, whatever. Which is they, they, take the two, they take the two and add them together, which I don't think you can possibly do and make it a, a regular. You can't add two unrelated percentages together and get a meaningful number the way I look at it. But they use it. Now, OPS plus, Billy, I can't help you with because I'm not exactly sure what that one is. Um, I, I don't want to know too much about the sabermetrics. Um, like who, what his war is. I have um, baseball reference on okay. the computer right now. And they list his war. I won't look at it because I don't. That, that's too out of that's too out of hand for me, but um, that's it's beautiful because I you know what we probably have a lot of people out there that don't know that these are these are new, and I we here, here's what I always say on base percentage I want to know that for the guys at the top right. of the order I don't right. care what the on base percentage of my cleanup on, man yeah. is right okay slugging percentage I don't care what my leadoff man slugs I want my three four and five guys to slug. You know, okay. but the point is, when they add those two together, they, they're basically telling you, here's how we figured out that we have a complete ball player. By the way, his career OPS is 976. If you have 800 in a season, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. 800 is a good number for, for OPS. His career OPS was 976. He went over 1,000, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Nobody today does this stuff. And I might add, without steroids. Yeah, he didn't have any of that. He probably had so, pierogies. There was a there was one ball game, and I think it was uh, like maybe nineteen. It was the early fifties. Uh, the bases loaded, and uh, Stan hits a grand slam home run. But just as he rounds first base, one of the umpires comes out and holds up his hands. What had happened was a stray baseball had rolled onto the field and a timeout was called that nobody heard. So they made Stan go back and bat again. In the meantime, Solly Hemus, who was manager of the Cardinals, and at least four teammates were ejected for arguing as to why Sam Crawford, the umpire, would make the call. So Stan, not knowing what was going on, went back uh, in accordance with the instructions from first base umpire to say, Stan, uh, you got you got a bat again. So he goes back and he looks at Sam Crawford and said, what happened? And Sam Crawford had mentioned a stray baseball rolled out onto the field, a timeout was called that nobody had seen, and the right call was made. They had to, because then the other side would have said, wait a minute, exactly. they called a timeout. So they, they asked, the reporters asked Sam Crawford, the umpire, after the game was over, what Musial's response was. And he said, just like a gentleman, he just said, yeah, I'm sorry it happened, let's go again. <laughs> he said, the guy's in a class by himself. But let me tell you what happened when Stan went back and batted again. He hit a triple, and you know he led the league in triples. Many times. Many times. So he cleared the bases with a triple in that same at bat. So anyway, known as a gentleman, respected, honored, here, it, what can you say? Here's another number. We talked about the strikeouts. A 22-year career, mm -hmm. he struck out 696 times total. Right. Andrew McCutcheon's a pretty good ball player, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. He's been in the league for four years. All right. He struck out 430 times. Already? Already. Now, compare that to Reggie Jackson, 2,476 Hello. times, I believe. So that's four times as much, and their careers paralleled in the number of years Pretty close, I would Long think. Long careers, yeah, yeah in the 20-year, around 20 around seasons. Around that era. Yeah. So, and 24 All-Star games, by the way, because back in those days, they played two in some well, years. Well, only for a few couple of years. Yeah, wasn't it for the pension? Two or three. Wasn't it that they, they were going to take the extra money, the money from the extra All-Star? Was it in the late 50s, 58, maybe through I would have rather have gone nine World Series games. I would have. Don't give, don't give them any ideas. We'll be, play, we'll be having game nine of the World Series the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> It'll be great. Uh, Isn't it funny, though? I was thinking about this today with this weather we're having right now. Yeah. That 
when, when, the, when you get up to about Thanksgiving and they're playing these baseball games, like, and they just get into November, and how cold everybody is. Oh, it's Wrong, terrible. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's so cold. It's beautiful compared to now. <laughs> It's not really that cold Just, in no, at the first of November. It really but, isn't. But don't play it in Cleveland. You'll be surprised. That could be an issue. Or Chicago. Okay, we're going to do a break. We'll come back. Uh, our phone number. You know what? We've neglected to give that throughout the show, although it's been Seven, two, up four, here. Go ahead. 2360430. All right, we'll take our break and we'll return. 724-236-0430. Back in a flash. Since 1914, people in the local area have relied on the Rusevich family in deepest time of need. The Rusevich family is the oldest established name in the funeral profession in the AK Valley. Its reputation and unquestionable service speaks for itself. Now the proud tradition of service continues with a fourth generation. The Rusevich family serves the AK Valley from two locations, Fifth Avenue Arnold and Leechburg Road, Lower Burrell. Welcome to Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, the place for big appetites. Their great sandwich selection includes the Geronimo, piled high with generous portions of meat and fixings. Their barbecue ribs are the best in town. Half rack or full rack, they don't come better. Buffalo Bill's wings are everybody's favorite. Uniquely oven baked, not deep fried, and yet so crispy. Your choice of 13 flavored seasonings. Grab a bucket for the big game. Eat in or take out, credit cards accepted. Buffalo Bill's Roadhouse, Freeport Road, New Kensington, across from Falderelli Square. AKLC Studios LLC is the place for your video and multimedia needs. Let AKLC Studios produce a unique television commercial for your business. At your location or in our studios, we're here to meet your needs. Ever want your own television show? Let us show you how. AKLC Studios LLC can even tape your special events and weddings. Whatever your multimedia need, call AKLC Studios LLC in Leechburg today. Professional quality at hometown prices. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. We were talking about uh, Stan Musial uh, quite a bit here tonight because of Stan's passing this past Saturday. Uh, there was one other situation I'd like to bring to light, and, and by the way, it's in my book, uh, Bob Tattern Sportsman. It's, we talk about uh, a number of uh, Stan's chapters or quick, quick read stories on his career. There was one time when uh, Stan Musial was in a batting race with Frank Baumholtz, I'm trying to remember who he played for. It could have been the Cubs, but in either case, uh, Stan Musial started out as a pitcher in minor league ball, played a full year at the Florida State League level, but he uh, fell on his shoulder. He had pitched for three years, as I said, fell on his shoulder one day and uh, could not you know, pitch at any great length, so the career as a, pitch, as a pitcher was over. Uh, Baumholtz and his team coming into town and the St. Louis Cardinals decide they're going to let Stan Musial pitch to Frank Baumholtz. All right? Now, I don't remember, and it really doesn't matter, if the Cardinals took their starting pitcher and put him in another position for this one at bat, exchange with Musial right. as an example, so that he could come back in. But Musial pitched to one batter, which was Baumholtz. Frank, uh, frankly, uh, Musial had his stuff that night. Baumholtz drilled a shot that went down toward, I believe it was third base, and it skipped off uh, and, and took a bad hop from what I remember about the story. And it, most official scores would have given it a hit because of the hop. But the St. Louis folks, wanting to make sure that Stan would win the batting title, cited it as an error, which would have made that at bat an 0 for 1. Stan Musial walks off the mound, and he, he's going back to his regular position. He goes over to the dugout where there's a phone up to the press box, and he gets on the phone, and he's pleading Frank Baumholtz's case to say that's got to be a hit. So what a gentleman this guy is. He's in a batting race that he could have lost, and he did win it that year. Yes, he you did. You and I did look we that did up. check it up. It was 1952. 1952, and uh, he wanted to help out the guy that he was – racing against for the batting title. Amazing. What a gentleman. What a gentleman. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of news and notes before we run out of here. Yeah. Um, the big controversy at Gateway High School with Terry Smith, the football coach, has been there for quite a while now. And the school board has been trying to 
give him the gentle nudge. Okay. He was coach and athletic director. They took his out. They took the athletic director position and took it from full time down to part time and slashed his salary in half. Ooh, and geez. then they opened the foot. You know how they when they basically want to run you out. They open up the job and let every, let anyone else apply. Um, and it looked like that this year was going to be his last. He was 101 and 30 over 11 years. Oh my! Including four trips to the Quad A championship game. But tonight, Terry Smith has taken a job at Temple to be the wide receivers coach, Ooh. moving up to college, basically telling Gateway, thank you and goodbye. <laughs> a Gateway program that was, was in the depths when he got there. And now uh, Terry Smith is leaving high school coaching to go to Temple and uh, coach wide receivers for Steve Adazio, which I think is, is very, very interesting. And I think he finally had enough of it all, and a job came calling to him. And he Politics took, is terrible, isn't oh, it? Oh, my goodness. It, <laughs> and we, Bob, we've seen it a thousand times. It happens all the time. And then the Pirates, on again, off again, now on again courtship with pitcher Francisco Liriano does appear to be on again. Uh, it was a month ago that they had signed him to a two-year contract worth in the neighborhood of I believe it was $12 million. I thought it was 14 A little bit but of, yeah, but they, yeah. they brought it back that the, the original estimate said 14, brought it back to maybe 12 and a quarter million. But then something happened around Christmas time where he hurt his right arm, which is not his Ooh. pitching arm. His pitching arm is his left arm, but, but there's never been any explanation as to what he did. So that put everything on hold. Now, again, supposedly today, they agreed to basically the same deal, except that if he misses any time because, because of, of that, whatever that injury is to his right arm. Mm -hmm. The non-pitching arm. The non-pitching arm, then he will be responsible for that, and it's going to bring the it's going to bring the his, number his the number down. down yeah. So it, it seems to me like he may not be ready to go when they first start because he's missing time now, and these pitchers are getting ready now. Oh yeah, they got to be. And spring training is only three weeks. It's only yeah. three weeks because the season's they're starting earlier this year. So he may not be ready to go right out of the gate. It may be something like we had with Burnett last year. They may have to wait for him. But now that they've also signed Karsten since the last time um, we were here. Mm -hmm. Um, that they, they put together some depth in the two minor league kids. Locke and McPherson would be ready to come if they need somebody well, else. And then, Garrett, come up. and then Gary Cole further into the summer. So they've, they've, put, they've put together at least a little bit of depth in that rotation. And so hopefully he'll be ready to go and hopefully he'll pitch well for them. By the way, real quick, uh, do, you, do you remember the uh, clause in the contract when Burnett was with Toronto? About the concerning, limousines. Yeah, the limousine the service rides for his wife. His wife. Well, they, he, he, and he eight, would, I think it was six or eight times a year. He to would, get her from Baltimore and drive her up to, to, Toronto. to Toronto to see games. And I wonder, I'm going to guess it may still be, he probably had it when he, when he signed with the Yankees. It's probably still in his contract. Yeah. And that, that limo ride from Baltimore to Pittsburgh isn't that bad. No. no that, that's, that's four hours. It's a think. quickie. Yeah, four it's hours, a quickie. maybe five. Folks, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. You had a good time. It's We've been thought, fun being here. I missed, hey, I missed everything. I haven't been here in like a be, month. You're be, <laughs> I can come back next week again. I really can. We'd like to have you back, I can Mike. come back next week. And uh, anyway, and good luck with uh, whatever other ventures you're involved in. We have plenty of basketball left. So, we'll have a, yeah. we, have a, we have a big one coming up against Indiana. Highlands at Indiana tomorrow. Mm. Highlands going for number 17 in a row on the losing side. And mm. a special, special air time for that one next th this coming Thursday, 10.30. Um, that's a sp special time for our West Coast viewers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 60 minutes follows. All right, folks, Murder thanks again. Wrote. I'm Bob Tatter. I'm Mike Pavlik. Thanks for joining us. Good night, everybody. Sportsline, brought to you by Ace Hardware, AKLC Studios, Arnold Furniture, Buffalo Bills Roadhouse, Facio's Italian Deli, Highland Tire, Matteo's Pizza, Myrna's Brewery Outlet, the Resevich family of funeral homes, 380 Discount Warehouse, Tower Auto Sales, and West Warren Insurance Services 